For more on the situation in Thailand, let's now talk exclusively to Mr. Kitirat Naranon, Thailand's Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister. So we've learned that the Finance Ministry, among several important places, has been occupied by protesters. So how does that impact your work? Well, good morning from Bangkok. And um, as of now, um, of course, uh, you might have seen some scenes that uh, protesters uh, step in certain uh, government uh, offices, but majority of them, it was like uh, only uh, step in for a few minutes or a few hours and then step out. Um, it seems to be only two spots, um, which is the Minister of Finance and the government center, which is uh, up north uh, in the suburb of Bangkok, uh, close to the former airport. Um, and um, at the moment, um, everybody tried to talk in such a way that uh, we can really understand what the protesters really want. And uh, if we can understand uh, well enough what they exactly want, I believe that uh, there'll be some uh, good conclusion. Uh, let me try to recall to you that uh, the protesting started some two, two and a half weeks ago on the issue of, of amnesty. and. Uh, the amnesty bill was proposed uh, by the House of Representatives in order that uh, we can achieve the so-called forgive and forget, which means that uh, forgive um, several uh, politicians on both sides on certain uh, actions in the past few years. But when um, we learned that uh, on the streets didn't seem to buy the idea of the so-called forgive and forget, some camps did not agree to forgive uh, one former prime minister and the other camp uh, disagreed to forgive the other former Prime Minister. So the um, Prime Minister stepped in as the administration to request the bill to be uh, dropped out. Um, so that's the example of um, the uh, um, intention to listen to uh, the demand or the proposal of the protesters. So Mr. Narinan, uh, we've heard that demonstrators claim that protests will come to an end on Sunday, but there's still no sign of an immediate solution as more promises are joining the protests. So when do you think, when do you expect this political turmoil to come to an end? Um, it's difficult to guess, but um, of course in every protest uh, in the past, uh, not only in Thailand, I believe the protesters try to um, heat up uh, the situation in, in such a way that it would come into conclusion uh, as soon as possible. Um, of course, uh, we like to see this uh, be concluded as soon as possible too. But um, so far, um, we haven't really understand too clearly what the protesters really want. And um, I uh, believe that um, we still have time to uh, talk, even though the uh, deadline is set by the protesters. But uh, as uh, similar to what happened in the past, a certain deadline set and then postponed and then set again again but uh, we're not trying to um, um, I would say overlook uh, the intention of protesters that they want to see this concluded we'd like to see this concluded too but how we would uh, be able to conclude it uh, in a um, lawful way uh, according to the Constitution so mr. deputy prime minister the government has uh, proposed to open talks on a number of occasions with the opposition. Uh, what kind of compromises would government be willing to make? Well, uh, as I said, uh, we'd like to hear very clearly what exactly the protesters really want. And if we can understand clearly what they want, um, I believe that uh, whatever proposition they would propose, it will be considered very, very carefully. But uh, if you don't really understand it too well, because you know, as I mentioned to you that two, two and a half weeks ago, uh, the protesting start uh, with the uh, amnesty bill. And um, when it was so clear that uh, people, not only this group of people, but those who did not want to forgive uh, the other pro uh, former prime minister, uh, it was a very clear proposition. Then uh, the government, when we are in a position to give, uh, we are very, very ready to consider. What measures will the government take if tensions continue to escalate? Well, as of now, I would say that um, in the short term, even though some of the um, government offices, which include the uh, Minister of 
plans and also um, certain uh, government organization uh, located in the government center uh, is now in difficulty but things can still be run as usual because we have backup system we have office for those civil servants to work in order to provide uh, service to the public but of course if uh, situation drag on uh, for further in the medium term in the longer term then inefficiency would cause some difficulty for the, the government. Um, I believe that um, at that time, uh, public in general would not uh, want to see the protesters um, doing something that could be harmful for the uh, prospect of the country in the medium term and the longer term. And by that time, it's a time for both of us, uh, the government side and the protester side, to sit down and try to uh, talk uh, in a more serious manner. Uh, Mr. Deputy uh, Prime Minister, we've learned uh, that uh, your country's tourism industry is expected to suffer a 10% loss in earnings in the first quarter of next year. So just how bad would this be for your country's economy overall? Well, actually, the uh, fourth quarter of the calendar year, um, we start from October, November, and ending in, in December, is an uh, important quarter for our tourism industry because uh, it's the end of rainy season in the upper part of uh, the country and uh, we are very uh, much willing to welcome uh, those tourists come, come into the country. So far, uh, um, we haven't seen much impact because uh, protesting is still uh, limited into a certain area. It's still limited to the area of uh, some government organizations not uh, as much on the area that tourism, uh, the, those tourists would want to visit. For example, when we talk about the Grand Palace, which is uh, the most important uh, spot of uh, traveling to Bangkok. Um, Grand Palace is opening uh, to welcome those tourists. Um, shopping centers, um, they're all very ready to welcome them. So, so far, uh, nothing uh, uh, too harmful. But of course, in the longer term, if tourists uh, don't feel that uh, it's the uh, right place for them to visit. There are some other uh, spots that are more peaceful. Of course, um, we learn that, that that could be a possibility. So that's why I'm saying that uh, we would like to talk to the protesters and hope that uh, we would end this uh, as soon as possible. And <clears throat> according to uh, um, the history, <coughs> the um, misunderstanding or political interruption uh, like this would not last for too long. And <coughs> please trust this administration that uh, we not try to use any armed force uh, to try to end uh, the uh, protesting in a similar manner that the former administration did. And that might explain that uh, <coughs> why um, the protesting, which is supported by the uh, <coughs> for, for former uh, Prime Minister too, seems to uh, be um, very forceful, while the government, uh, which is under the leadership of Prime Minister uh, Ms. Jing Lak Shinawat, uh, you know, handle it in a um, very you know, careful and peaceful way. So let's talk more about handling of the situation. How will your government safeguard travelers' safety in the event of an emergency situation? Well, we uh, call in um, policemen uh, from uh, the other part of the country, which includes uh, those uh, remote provinces, to uh, come and guard uh, the government house and other important spots so that uh, the policemen in Bangkok uh, still work on the role to take care of the safety of uh, those tourists and also the uh, Bangkok people. So we are not uh, dropping out the of um, you know, uh, police force in order to uh, handle the protesting situation. Um, they're still uh, in full force handling uh, the safety for everyone visiting uh, Bangkok. And outside of Bangkok, you might have seen uh, some scenes that uh, some uh, small group protesters step in some other uh, governor's house and it was uh, temporary too. So um, in other provinces, uh, you don't really you know, see a uh, problem for the uh, tourist. Thank you very much, Mr. Kitarat. That's our exclusive interview with Mr. Kitarat Naranong, Thailand's Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister. You're watching CCTV News. Stay with us.